scheme is uh, completely funded by Dunira Down County Council and um, unfortunately my my counterpart from Dunira, Kira King, wasn't able to be here this evening but uh, nevertheless uh, we we will go ahead and you'll get all the information that you need. So DLR are funding this and it, the funding is coming from their arts office and from their economic development unit and it's their fourth time, I think I'm right in saying, to fund such a scheme. It's €12,000 for each of the successful um, applicants. And that's an inclusive figure, inclusive of VAT. So it's it's good to be mindful of that. But of course, that information is all in the brief. Um, I would like to introduce my uh, guests here this evening. First of all, I'll go with Bjorn Magilla. And uh, Bjorn actually was a previous award winner for DLR First Frames, I think in 2017, 2018, and um, produced the film The Lighthouse. Um, uh, he also has um, lots of other productions to his name as well. I think I have some of them. I don't want to get them wrong now, Bjorn, but uh, Still Dancing, Terrible Things, and Wrath, and of course, as I mentioned, The Lighthouse. Um, so he'd be able to share some of his uh, knowledge of from from uh, as being a producer and also as being an, a DLR First Times Award winner uh, the very first time around. And also joining us today is the head of the Department of Film and Media in IADT's National Film School. And of course, she herself is an award-winning producer, director, writer. And so we look forward to hearing from Vanessa shortly too. Um, she has an extensive portfolio and I thought about listing out some of your work, Vanessa, but when I saw, <laughs> when I saw it, I thought, better to direct people to have a look uh, online at vanessagilday.com to, to really get a, a sense of, of that. So we also have um, Paul Curran here this evening. He's uh, hiding in the background there. He's our IADT's education technologist and he is supporting us with the technology side of this event. Thank you, Paul. So uh, my name is Bernadette Maher and I'm managing the deal or first frame scheme, uh, short film funding scheme for Dunleary Down County Council and I work very closely with my colleagues in the National Film School at IADT. So I'm going to jump right in now and quickly run through some key points about the application and the assessment process and then after that Vanessa and Bjorn will take over and talk about the filmmaking side of it and um, the importance of a good script and so on. So um, the scheme, as you probably have picked up by now from looking at the brief, is aimed at emerging filmmakers. And um, so we'll go straight to the um, to the presentation here. Sorry, it goes uh, whoops. Go straight to the presentation um, now, Paul. So I slide you. There you go. So uh, can you can everybody see that? OK, is that big enough? Do I need to make it bigger there, Paul? Or I'm controlling this actually. Um... So I think you can see that, can you? Everybody can see that, yeah. okay? That's good, okay, let us know in the chat if you can't. So it's basically, the first part of it is about um, other funding. We get a lot of questions about this and we, we, we've covered this each time, but it's just important to reiterate that crowdfunding is not allowed under the scheme. Uh, again, a lot of this information is in the brief, but I think it's important to to point it out again because it's, it's it it means it's the difference between remaining eligible and, and not and, and um, not being eligible so other funding if you have any is allowed but it must come from a le legitimate and non-competitive source to dlr other funding must be available for the project at the time of application so it's not a case of well it's going to cost twenty thousand to make this and we'll find the other eight eight thousand in time you have to actually um have have uh, evidence of that if you're shortlisted to, to prove that that money will be forthcoming and you can actually make the film. So written confirmation of the funds will be required before a formal offer. So uh, other funders can be included in the credit roll, but not as the main film funder. DL or Ratdown County Council must appear as the primary funder um, if, if you are successful to with this award. So uh, own, own money and family money can be used subject to the above conditions. Again, DLR will have to take um, prominence in terms of the credits. And uh, raising money through sponsorship or using other bursary prize small funds is permitted. Again, subject to those conditions, you have to literally roll a by, you know, um, DLR and make sure that they are OK with that. So just something to be aware of when you're looking at the, the cost of your production and so on. So I'll move on there now to, again, in the um, the brief, we've outlined stage one and stage two criteria. And what we've done here 
uh, since last year is to actually make the stage one application less onerous. So we're looking for a script and for uh, proposed DLR locations to film in. And you can see the way the um, the scores are, are divided up between those two criteria. So we did this because in the earlier years we we found that um, you know we were asking for a lot of information about producers, directors, companies, um, schedules, budgets, the whole lot. So what we look for is you know an overall budget at, at that stage. Just can you make it for the twelve thousand? And if not, where will you source the rest of the money? So the online application will ask you those kind of questions, but the key focus will be the, a good strong script. And um, that will take people then to stage two. So if you're sh shortlisted, then uh, we start to look at um, look for more information from you. And again, that's clearly outlined in the in the brief. So the important thing is to remember you're making a short film. The duration uh, probably a minimum of seven minutes, maximum fifteen, and ideally around twelve. Now, don't be too prescriptive about it, but considering the budget that's available, and um, that's more or less where it should be at. So. In, in considering D DLR locations, there's a tendency to kind of focus on the coastal areas. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make it in a coastal area uh, in the DLR catchment, but um, we just ask you, you know, to sort of think outside of that as well and consider some of these other locations that we've listed here. And um, there's a couple of important points. If it's some of the forested areas are not DLR managed, they're actually a DLR County Council managed, they're managed by Quilcha. So if you're cons if you're thinking of filming there, you need to um, take that into consideration and see what the what Quilcha would require from you in terms of permission and, and so on. Um, and the other thing that's mentioned in the brief as well is that there's the two, the two big houses in the DLR area, that's uh, Marley Park House and the, the one in Cabinteely there in the park. Um, a lot of people think you know they like to film there, but they end up they're expensive and they're also um, they're in high demand. Now, uh, Kira King, if she was here, would say you know they do make representations if people want to film there and try and try and accommodate with the the people who run them um, to to allow that to happen. But it can be very difficult. And I know one one of the films that's just finished now from the last round of funding was filmed in an old house, but it's, it wasn't a um, it was in the DLR area, but it wasn't a DLR managed uh, property. So uh, I think nearly the whole thing was shot on location in this house. It took them, it was quite difficult for them to find the big old house for this, which was the appropriate kind of setting for the story. But, um, but they, you know, so there's a cost implication for you there if you, if you do that. So just, just think kind of uh, wide and far in terms of uh, DLR, but that's to give you a general idea. Um, and then the stage one, uh, the, the, this year we've changed the application process a little bit in that it's an online submission and that's to help us to kind of streamline the administration side of it and have uh, the information uh, really tight and compact ready for the assessors to start, script assessors to start looking at it more or less immediately uh, after the closing date. And the kind of information that you, and, and the, the link, sorry, to that uh, online submission is at the IADT website on the DLR First Frames 2021-22 uh, 20, scheme page. So it will look for key contact details. So whoever's the main contact for this submission, a log line and synopsis, and then the completed script. Now you can attach the script at a max 25 MB, which is really quite substantial. It shouldn't be any bigger than that. Um, I'm told by our technical experts in IADT. Um, don't include any photographs, it's just text only, just the, just the written, uh, the typed script. And then a list of the proposed DLR catchment areas will need to be entered into the online application form. So you need to have those thought out and ready when you're submitting and an indicative schedule for production and post-production company info and proposed crew. So if that's known, it's not part of the judging criteria, but if you already have a company set up and you, you have a, a good idea who the key crew are, are going to be, and um, we'd appreciate that information up front. It just means we've less to gather later if you're shortlisted, but you don't have to put it in and it won't be like held against the application or anything like that. Um, but we, what I would say to you about that is that what we have now is a very long window. We've really extended the time that you have to get your script together. 
So um, we launched about two weeks ago and the closing date is not until the 9th of September. So uh, there's quite a long lead in time in terms of preparing the script um, and the application. But all we want at this stage is what, what's asked of you in the online application form, that information with your script and that's it. So we're not looking for photographs or lots of links to previous work or anything like that. Not at this point in time. Um, if you're shortlisted, we'll look for that later. So you can see a list of what would be required at the shortlisting stage. And the reason we're giving this out up front now is that, you know, it's something to be thinking about over the summer and, you know, start thinking about who, who the key people are and maybe building something that if you're successful, because there's a small window when once you're told that you're shortlisted until the interview date and a lot of additional information is required at that point. So it is something you need to be thinking about and prepare for in advance. And um, just to go over the key dates again, again, this is all on the, the IADT uh, website on the brief. So you're looking at the closing day is five o'clock sharp. It's an online submission, so it will literally shut down at five o'clock. Um, so I, I implore you not to leave it to the last minute. We have had issues before where people have internet has gone, the electricity has gone or so something has happened, you know, and um, they, they've missed the deadline and there's there's nothing we can do about that. If it, whether it's two minutes late or two hours late, it's just it just won't be eligible. So we will notify people after the uh, script assessment, the stage one assessment before the end of September. And then we will look for additional paperwork by the 12th of October. So you can see that there's only really a two week um, window there to gather all of those extra bits and pieces that are required if you're shortlisted. So it'd be no harm to be pulling those together in the meantime. And then uh, the stage two panel interview uh, will have a, a representative from um, IADT's National Film School and from um, DLR and then we'll have an external person as well in the film industry. So the interviews could take place either the 20th or the 21st of October. So you need to have both of those days um, kind of pen penciled in your diary if you're shortlisted because you have to be available in order to remain eligible. And um, we don't know which of the days obviously it depends on how many are shortlisted and so on. Uh, so just just bear that in mind that and we, we would at least need the producer and director and the script writer is what we'd be looking for there. So um, and then the decision will be made very quickly. So by Friday the 22nd and then all the paperwork and all the uh, contracts and all that bit happen uh, through through November and have to be completed, completed by early December. So um, that's kind of the, the housekeeping and part of it, I suppose. So I think I'm going to hand over to Vanessa now um, and Bjorn. So if you could if you could uh, take it from there, Vanessa, that'd be great. Thank you, Bernie. Um, so what I'm going to do, I have a little bit of a presentation. It's it's a fairly um, uh, straightforward enough, uh, basic a uh, presentation on focusing mostly on script and I'm going to kind of fly through but some of it like I can see some of the names I know some of them are um uh some are about to be graduates of the film course so some of it will be um you'll have maybe heard from me or the tutors before but I'm just going to run through it as you are you may have a script you're about to write you may have a script you've written but here's just a few bits and pieces and then I know um Bjorn has some tips which will be great as well and uh, feel free to interrupt me Bjorn at any stage if you'd like to. <laughs> um, I'm going to just share that screen with you now. <clears throat> Make sure it worked as, early, as easy as it did earlier. Of course it's not. Should be coming now. Thanks for your patience. It's just, there we go. So as I said, it's not a particularly visual, it's not even as nice as Bernie's presentation without all of the colours, but it's, it's just, it's very, very basic. So, um, um, 
I'm going to fly through it um, as quickly as possible. OK, so everybody's probably heard this a million times and, you know, there's already information from last year's information seminar up there about keeping it simple. And all good stories have a beginning, a middle and an end. But keeping it simple, what, what do we mean when we say that? Well, you know, one idea, one spark, one theme, one person. Your idea can start from somewhere very simple. Avoid cliché. What is it that you or your team want to say with your own unique voice? What is it that you want to say to the world? And workshopping your ideas collectively. Um, Bjorn is going to talk to you a little bit later about sharing your script and, 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 and editing and things like that. I'll, I'll mention it slightly. I mean, two to three characters minimum. For this duration, we're talking seven minutes to 15 seven pages to 15 roughly with an ideal somewhere in the middle but 15 is not a target you know so keeping your your script as simple and concise as possible and keeping your characters to a, a, um, a minimum that's not to say you will be penalized if you suddenly have uh, you know some kind of dance ensemble in your film if you can prove to us that it's part it works in the script you won't be penalized but just just based on the budget and what's available to you and the time scale and all that, that that's the best way to go minimize your locations i mean that doesn't mean you should only have one or two but you and totally embrace the Dunleary rat down area has has to offer and even seen that list there bernie that you had up and I, i'd seen that last year i find that quite inspiring because you go oh look oh yeah the the woods or the, the you know the uh, uh, you know that the hellfire is in that region i mean i think that's really interesting and anyone who's about to write a script specifically for this scheme i think that's a great starting point that location list um I always say simplicity of concept allows for complexity of creativity. And I'll come back to that next. I was going to say, just you know, to like interrupt have, yeah. for a second, just in terms of the locations as well with DLR, like I agree exactly what you're saying, that they should um, embrace them. And like when you're making a short film, the location can be the hardest thing to find, but it can also be what adds the most production value if you get the right locations. So like with DLR, there's loads of stuff, you know, they have the woods, they have the beach, they have little country roads, they have cityscapes. So like I would say, if you can, to go to Dunleary, like walk around. Um, I remember Anne, who used to teach in, in Dunleary, gave me uh, advice once, bring little voice memos, like make little notes about what you see and what you feel when you're there. You know, uh, take photos and then try and build the locations into your script as opposed to trying to shoehorn your script into the locations to suit the criteria. Because like Dunleary are waiting, the, it's weighted 70% for the idea and 30% for the locations, which is quite a significant, um, you know, it's quite a significant amount for um, given to locations so make sure that you get them the best locations you can that work the most for you. I agree Bjorn I think it's a good point and I think as well like you know you might be looking at making a genre film it could be horror could be zombie could be you know some kind of modern western there isn't um, a location that you could think of you know um, that you couldn't find within Dunleary Rathdown as you say there's woodland there's parts of Dunley right down that feel like the countryside, like the deep countryside. And then you have an urban um, vista as well as we know all the beautiful coastal areas as well. But it is about using that Dunley right down imaginatively, I think. So uh, spot on, um, Bjorn. So, OK, I mean, look, I'm aware that a lot of you know this, but just who is your main character and, and showing us their normal life and all those elements we know about. But, who is your main character ties into? Whose story are you telling? Like what what I want, what we want to see is that there's no confusion from the writer about whose film it is. Or sometimes I've been on the panel for script awards and we've actually had to discuss who did you think this the main character was? And I think if we're asking ourselves that there's something problematic with the script, but that doesn't mean that you can't subvert what the norms are you all know that we welcome that 100 percent. but just you know the basic tenets of screenwriting what do they want is somebody stopping them getting it that doesn't mean that there isn't room for visual poetry uh, poetic style films you may propose something that has uh, breaks traditional norms but um usually somebody trying to get something somebody stopping them what do they want and what do they need? I mean, the basic tenets. I'm not going to linger on them because um, it's kind of script writing 101, really. But just to to bear that in mind when you're editing your script as well. Um, show, don't tell, you know, and, and that doesn't mean 
I know it's a it's another script writing 101, but think about ways that you can show us something happening without us hearing the dialogue. Like being visual in your script is really, really important. We don't have to hear every word of an argument if we are on the if we are on the point of view of the person who's hearing the argument or we can um uh you know see the fight and see it through a window through a door just when you're at the editing stage of your script before you submit it to DLR first frames that you look at any element of your script that you could replace out uh visually um if we know that there's tension leading up to a fight we don't necessarily need to hear what the fight is about that's just one example um often open well open your script introduce your main character in a memorable way it doesn't mean they have to drop out of an airplane in the sky because that won't be possible in this budget but um it just can be something else that makes them stand out you can do it with color you can do it with costume um but it is something that makes it very clear um who the who the person's film is again these aren't hard and fast rules and don't write anything in your script we can't see or hear. I mean, that's uh, obviously um, a big no-no. And don't write camera directions or transitions. These things will just show that you're maybe not, you know, um, it is an emerging award, um, but it is also an award. We, we're aware that all of you have made um, something, films of some form before. Um, um, th these are just some other tips. Um, you know, again, they're simple, maybe overly simplistic at this level, but I just, as I thought of them, I just thought I'd, I'd throw them in. Um, brevity and clarity, keep it short and clear. Uh, the best scripts are actually like bare skeletons that you build the creative flesh all around them. Um, and here's a couple of key things. You know, in 2021, be aware of gender balance and diversity in your film. Um, you know, if you have a main character, what would happen if you made that uh, a woman, a person of colour, um, you know, someone from the LGBTQI community, what, whatever it is. But just, you know, what would happen if you flip things around? And if you're going to write a solicitor, a police officer, a guard, that, whatever it is, you know, and you you want to spread diversity throughout your film, say a female doctor, say a female police officer otherwise generally they will be cast as a man i think as um, well sorry just with it with, with that with diversity which i think is really important in, in films um is don't do it for the sake of doing it as well though. i mean do it definitely to do it but do it wholeheartedly because you can you can sometimes see when people are just doing it uh, like tokenistically you know like actually do it because it's something that should be done like it is genuinely something that should be done in short films and in, in films in general you know yeah, hundred percent. You know, that's that even flipping things around isn't going to work in every situation, I suppose. But it's sometimes if you have, um, you know, a crime story or you know, gangster heist film, and if you look at making those characters women, nothing changes other than you've made really well-rounded female characters, um, or you're surprising us a little bit. Or, um, but I, I agree, Bjorn. Nobody's interested in tokenism, you know, and it, and it does stand out off the page. Um, but it's just when you're at the edit stage again, or at the creation stage, that you you have an awareness um, that the world is fifty percent female, and that. Um, there are uh, that we are a hugely multicultural society now. So just it's that that awareness of that is important. Um, you know, can you identify in your script the themes and the emotional heart? Can you communicate them to someone else? Um, is your script boring? <laughs> I can't even believe I've written that down. But, you know, um, Bjorn will talk a little bit more about sharing your work as well. Can you describe your story in one clear sentence? Is it cliched? What is new or urgent or important about it? You don't have to answer all of these questions, but it can help to ask them. What does it say to the world? This doesn't mean that everybody has to make issue based filmmaking. In fact, um, you know, if we if all we could go to see in the cinema was social filmmaking or social issue filmmaking, well, it would be quite a boring place to go or monotonous. But um, you can have a comedy or a genre film and still say something um, that you want to say, but you could also want to make us laugh. And, you know, boy, do we need more comedy writers as well. And um, what's original, fresh and exciting about it? And um, does it make us laugh, cry, think? Does it have heart, truth and integrity? 
Um, I just took my own short film here as an example. It's not to promote my own work or is perfect or anything, but I can use it as an example. Um, it's a it's a short film. Um, you just Google the white dress short film, you'll see it. It's three minutes long, so it's shorter than the scheme, but it's a, I can say I, I got funded for it by Screen Ireland because I knew it was just one simple clear idea. The script was very bare and sparse. Um, it was based on a true story, a simple idea of a girl who makes her Holy Communion by herself. I had the themes worked out. I knew what I was saying about it. I knew what style and genre it was. Um, there was no dialogue, so it was really visual and about sound. And in three minutes, um, you know, it, there's so many great short films at three, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you can still tell, you know, um, uh, a, a universal epic story in in that time. Um, just be brave with your subject matter. You know, they say the greatest films are the ones that scare us the most to make. Also, I'm just, you know, would love to receive comedy scripts. It's hard, but, you know, we couldn't encourage it more. Um, you know, pick an idea and imagine you're telling the story to your friends. And if you can tell it simply and really well, Generally, you're at the seed of something really good. Map the idea out, um, action it out on a page, one to 10 steps, get it all out on paper and then rewrite and rewrite and edit and edit. Um, ask for someone to read it. Don't tell them anything, get feedback and have fun. Um, try and fail and succeed and try again. Um, and that I do apologize to anyone if they've even heard me teach all these similar things before. But just for, you know, not fully aware of uh, everyone in the audience, they would be my top tips as you would um, go to write or edit a script you've already written. Um, Bjorn, I know you might be ready to uh, yeah. hop um, in there. I'm going to stop presenting there. I'll just say as well, there's one other um, tip before I talk about um, sharing already and editing stuff, which um, might sound obvious again, but it's just to watch loads of short films. You know, watch as many short films as you possibly can because it's quite a different form than feature films. It's quite different than short stories. Um, you know, I used to run a small festival, film festival on Clare Island. We used to get hundreds of um, submissions every year. And it really is like a, a, a unique kind of art form compared to feature films. And you often see scripts try and squeeze a feature film idea into a short script, which doesn't always work. Um, and sometimes you find like things like, like you're saying, that like comedies often work really well in the short format because there's, you know, a simple setup and a punchline that leaves you satisfied. Or with dramas, it can be hard to squeeze a full three act structure in there. Like definitely have a beginning, middle and end. But oftentimes with the dramas, if you watch lots of short films, you notice that it's maybe a slice, a slice from a, of life or a slice of drama from something seems to work really well. Or horrors work well as well because there's like, um, like a kind of a, yeah, a setup and a, and a definite, definite sort of punchline to it. Um, then in terms of editing and for, for feedback, um, I guess there's a bit of background to myself. I studied in Dunleary. I went there as a mature student and I graduated in 2015. And then we um, set up a company when we graduated and we've been lucky enough to have been funded six times, I think, um, for different schemes, one of them being Dunleary, uh, yeah, Dunleary and Screen Ireland and Arts Council and um, Kildare and some others. but. So these are things that we find that I found that have worked for us anyway for the stages of application. And I kind of think of it as three stages. There's the script stage, then there's the interview stage, and then there's the actual production stage if you get selected. Um, but so for the script stage, obviously I'm not a writer, so but Vanessa's gone through a lot of those points about what you do to make your script as good as possible. Um, and I think you have to put as much of yourself into it as possible and you know love it as much as you possibly can and write the best things you possibly can write and then this kind of the hard bit is that you try and step away from it you try and remove yourself from it and and give it to people for feedback so and and try and not take criticism personally so what we have always done when we have scripts is that we first of all give them to people that might know about scripts and films so they'll um you know they'll they'll give very pointed feedback but then also show it to friends and family just to get a general sense, because like everybody watches so much TV and film that we're all versed in filmic language so that people will get a sense of if they think it's good or not. Um, and one good tip we had in college was that if several people highlight a certain part of your script, 
they might be able to verbalize exactly what they think the issue with it is, but if the same part of your script gets highlighted, it may be something that you need to look at. Um, and then the other thing for feedback, which we find really useful is if you have if you have a producer on board or somebody that you trust, is to give them the script and get them to show it to people that don't know you at all. So that there's, there's somebody cold reading it, you know, and that then they can then filter the feedback back to you so they can blunt some of the harshest criticisms or, you know, boost the nicer things. But it's like, I think they always say the hardest bit of writing is rewriting, you know, a script. I think for the films that we've had funded, you know, some of them were 10, 15th, 20th drafts of things by the time they actually got submitted. And that'll probably change again once you get to the um, interview stage and talk to people. But yeah, they're my main things, Reading. Just share it, get feedback. Um, and try, like, try not to be offended or take criticism personally. Um, and film really is very collaborative. So that, like, you know, you can get really, really good ideas and try to be open to taking them on board, you know? I wonder if I might come in there um, after that, Bjorn. I was just thinking about in the previous schemes, um, sometimes uh, people who don't, you know, scripts that don't succeed, people will come back looking for feedback and want to know what, you know, why it didn't get through or what the script assessor said. So I generally have a conversation with them and give them that feedback. And very often what arises out of that is that um, the script writer will say, I kind of knew that, you know, I had a sense that it was weak in that way or that it needed more work in one area. As you say, it could be just one section of it or whatever, or it falls down at the at the last part of it or something. So um, to get that feedback rather than sort of submitting and maybe, you know, not having the best chance you can possibly have. I, I couldn't uh, support enough what you're saying is to do that before you have. And there's lots of time now for, for applicants to do that over the summer period. So, yeah, I totally agree with that. And also, if you happen to have crew attached or if you know people from other departments, you know, so like if you know cinematographers or if you know directors or producers or editors or, you know, show the script to them and have a chat to them because like you know there's people out there low whole, whole lot more than any of us you know and they can really give some really interesting you know a cinematographer give you really interesting visual tips or something that might really work with your script or an editor might be able to talk to you about the pacing of the script that something that might, might be able to be done like it's really handy to get people from the different disciplines of the film to have a look at it beforehand There was one other thing I was going to say, and again, it may go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways, that please, please, please have your script formatting perfect. And also um, have your spelling and grammar checked. Not everybody is brilliant at spelling and grammar, but as part of that process that Bjorn uh, and Bertie are talking about, get the most literate person you know to proofread it for you. Somebody who reads a lot of novels usually are great spellers um, and have them check it. This is not about being pedantic. This is that if you, like I know Bernie was saying, the number of submissions are growing and growing each year. It's huge. So it's a lot of scripts for people to read. And I know from doing my own MA in screenwriting in IADT in the National Film School that uh, professionals in the industry would say to us, they often would stop reading scripts if they were that poorly formatted or poor spelling or poor grammar. And because they have so many to read as professionals. Um, so it also sends the signals that you take yourself seriously, you take your craft seriously, you take the industry seriously and you take the um, award scheme seriously. Um, and uh, it instills confidence in us. It also it serves one very uh, other very important purpose. The for screenwriting formatting was invented for ease of flow and reading. Um, and um, I don't know if I'm on hold there or what's happening. Um, but it, it, it does serve the purpose of, um, it does serve the purpose of um, being able to read the script as it is supposed to be read. The formatting tells us who the character is, who's when a character has been introduced to the script in caps, what their age is, 
what's the next scene? We've moved from the bathroom to the kitchen to the hallway. If those things are not formatted correctly, the reader can get confused. And if we get confused, we get pulled out of the story. So it serves all of those um, purposes, I would say. Um, there was also there's a question. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. No, John, just with, with, that, with what you're saying with the formatting, um, again, when I was in IDT, we was taught about screenwriting. And a really good tip we found was like, don't uh, try avoid huge, big paragraphs of description as well, that you want to break it up so that each paragraph you're writing should um, represent a shot in your film almost. It's a really handy way because that really, it really helps you visualize yeah. the film in your head. Then if, if each paragraph is almost a new shot. Yeah. Um, the joy as a reader when you open a script and there's loads of white space. So your script should look like there should be so much white space on the page. And that is no more than two to three lines of description. Stop, take a break. What it also serves the purpose, Bjorn, is giving a more realistic sense of timing. So we know a page generally equals a minute on screen, but that's not always the case. Depends on the style of film, depends on the genre. But generally, that's the guide. If you format it like that and you keep your dialogue minimal, um, as minimal as possible that suits depends everyone's different and everybody writes differently but um we will have a more accurate you know i've seen scripts that are presenting as eight pages in reality they're 20 or 15 you know because they packed it all in in, in correct formatting so anyway um that's a uh, that's a, a good note as well not to no big chunks of text on the page it 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 drives the r reader out of the story um uh Bernie, there's a question there. How much experience is necessary for a director from Ali? Um, you're on mute there, Bernie. So I am. Sorry about that. Yeah, and she's she's asking about the whole oh the whole uh, team, yeah, team, yeah, as well. So, I mean, really, we're talking about emerging filmmakers. Now they would have to have they have to have a certain amount of competence and to show if they get short if the script gets shortlisted. Um, the next stage, you know, is quite tough and uh, we might bring maybe it's hard to say, maybe 10 through nine, 10, something like that. And um, it depends, you know, on the script assessors uh, scores and all the rest of it. But we would need to see that there's some level of competence that this team that have been assembled will actually be able to deliver uh, a short film for the for the budget. So we'll be looking at all the aspects, the budget, the scheduling, to see, you know, how realistic is all of that? Have they got a good understanding of the production and direction uh, for it? So that's why we interview at um, stage two, because we have to uh, dig deep into that and to see that, you know, if that award is made to that particular um, film that they can actually deliver. So, so it's you know, not, it's not aimed at complete beginners, Bernie. But somewhere between that and established. So it, somebody could have one or two good credits, mm. um, you know, um, strong uh, credits. Um, and it applies across the board. Like if if somebody has, you know, um, like extensive experience, um, but it doesn't necessarily, it, de it depends on what's been submitted in that um previous work as well doesn't it Bernie but it does, it's kind yeah. of case by case and you know I I think as well you know to have a producer that has produced um mm. because you are dealing with budgets and money and it is public funding as well is is important but that can be in the short you know one short form um production credit um I presume um there yeah. um Bernie yeah. Exactly. I mean, they are emerging, you know, so yeah. we're very aware of that. So it's that kind of little balance between, um, you know, somebody having kind of some success, but um, trying to trying to get something started as well, trying to get it, get it off the ground, you know, so um, that's it. And then I see another question there from Robert. I think as well, just in terms of the, um, the experience level, like if you are a very inexperienced or relatively inexperienced director or producer or whatever happens to be, like if you can, when you're putting your crew together, then surround yourself with people that are more experienced, like, you know, get a slightly more experienced cinematographer, get a slightly more experienced uh, editor, get a production designer, like yeah. they, they can help you. It's like, it's great to surround yourself with people yeah. that are more experienced than you. And those yeah. things. Like we, for our, uh, the Screen Ireland short we did, like we had a, a cinematographer, Narian, who's, you know, he's brilliant. So like mm -hmm. he really helped us a huge amount of the way um, in terms of getting the film to look as good as it could. Right. And what's quite common in submissions as well, I think, it, uh, 
in emerging award schemes is the director may often be the least experienced. Like the producer may have, you know, have played, made produced five short films and it could be the director's second. That could be possible. You're dead right. If you if, if we see the a confidence and a kind of um, a passion and a drive in the team mm -hmm. and the, the, the bringing in somebody, you know, who has shot a lot of films or your production designer, your, you know, all of that, that it instills confidence in, yes. in the panel for sure. For sure. And then the question from Robert about do you have to, do you need to have a registered company before submitting? The answer to that is no, but you will need a registered company or to be associated with a production company by the time, uh, if, if you're shortlisted, we need to see that you know, this is something that can, can actually happen. So you'd have to apply at that point. Now those things can take um, you know, a bit of time to process. So before any formal agreement um, is, is made, you know, you'd have to have a registered company in place. But, you know, as like I said, some of the award winners have used existing production companies, have aligned themselves with them and uh, and worked out of those. So if you already know that and you've, and you've worked that out with somebody, you can include that in the application. And again, you've got a couple of months to to give that some thought. I mean, we're not looking for to ask people to set up production companies just for this application, but you will need a production company if you're successful. So uh, you need to be mindful of that. And then Jacob is asking about how COVID aware must the scripts be in their practicality uh, room with 50 to 20 extras and streaming. Well, obviously we're, these films will be made in um, uh, 2022 and <laughs> we're all hoping that we'll be uh, in a different uh, space in terms of our safety and all the rest of it. What we what we did this time around um, when COVID emerged was we were able to secure additional funding. You know, it, it was a percentage of the overall fund um, for safe shoot expenses. And um, if COVID is still an issue, we would try to do that, but it's a modest amount. It would really cover, you know, cleaning down equipment, the kind of products you need for that, stickers for the floor, you know, keeping people social distance and so on. We're hoping that won't be the case in 2022. So I would I would write your script if n not with COVID in mind. And I mean, somebody we had one film that's just finished, which had a, an, an intimate scene in it. And so there had to be, be some seriously kind of creative uh, work around how they were going to make that happen uh, with with COVID in in play, so that would be something to kind of work through later. I would I would concentrate on the script and the quality of the script before getting too bogged down in that. You know, there's ways around things in the end. So yeah, we're very optimistic about heading into a new year, a new academic year with students filming. So we'd hope that the same would apply. To this award scheme but again nobody wants to thwart your imagination mm -hmm. but i think you know we'll, we'll 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 play that as it goes along and if, if elements of your script need to be adapted um then i think that 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 will be possible it's so hard to answer because you nearly have to be looking at you know it's a kind of a it's very it's a very kind of um theoretical kind of um hypothetical question mm -hmm. um because it's case by case but i think I think you should just enjoy your creativity for now and yes. celebrate it and we'll yeah. hopefully we'll be in a different a different place in, in 2022. Exactly. exactly. Thanks, Jacob. It's a good question, though. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Mm. Very topical. Yeah. OK, anything else? Any other questions? Anybody? Anything else, Bjorn or Vanessa, you feel we, we need to? No. Um, I have a small one just about in terms of if you do get through to the next stage, actually, oh, the yeah. interview process, mm. which is just um like again for the ones we've been shortlisted for is to prepare 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 as much as you possibly can like you, you like the first thing we always do is we sit down and we take the script and pretend it's somebody else's script and try and look at the production difficulties that might arise mm -hmm. like you, you're going in trying to convince the panel that this film can be made that it should be made and what are like what are the issues that might what are the yeah, production difficulties that might that might cause it to fall and be mm -hmm. trying like disassociate yourself from the script as much as possible and be as critical as you possibly can to it to figure out what those production differences might be. And then again, attach at that stage, attach as many of the key crew as you possibly can um, and, and to have conversations with them so that, that if, if the panel asks you questions about the visual style, about the sound design, about the score, about the pace of editing, about, you know, all sort of stuff 
that you have those answers ready. And another thing that we always do, which might sound silly, but we have several mock um, interviews beforehand. So we'll take everything that we'd sent to the Leary series, we sent to Screen Ireland, and we'll send it out to our friends who haven't read anything and get them to prepare as if they were the panel. And we will literally sit down for an hour and they'll grill us with, and we tell them to be as harsh as possible. And we'll do that. Like sometimes we've done three or four mock interviews beforehand to, um, like it sounds excessive, but it means that when you're going into the interview that you're really confident. And like, I think so far there's like there, we haven't, there has, a question hasn't come up that we haven't thought of beforehand or somebody else hasn't thought of beforehand during those mock interviews. So it's a really, really okay. useful tool to use, you know. Bjorn, no wonder you're so successful and have gone on. Bjorn was telling us earlier that after getting the DLR um, First Friends Award, that you've since been successful in six short film schemes at, at kind of bigger budget levels after that, which is extraordinary success rate. I know you've been shortlisted for an awful lot more, but that kind of prep is um, quite exceptional. And one of the things that often I get asked is, what are producers' notes? And they're kind of exactly what Bjorn is saying there is, is putting in paper as a producer why you want to produce the script, what you're drawn to in it, very briefly maybe. Um, but also what, um, it's it's stating out saying, I know we have more locations than, you know, two or three, but I'm confident that we can because of X. Uh, I know we have um, a shoot in water, but we have XXX in place. I know it looks like we want to shoot in a castle, but actually we know we can replicate it and cheat it this way. And, it, you know, you don't just put everything in those producers' notes. And you can say within the budget, well, I know we have a CGI deal for one grand all in because we can do it ourselves. Exactly. It's preempting. If, if, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you can do like something like with the CGI, which I think for the one for Delaney, we, we brought in because there were some CGI elements involved in that. So we brought in Kieran, the director, is brilliant at doing this sort of stuff himself anyway, but we brought in examples of that because yeah. we knew that was going to be a question they'd ask. We brought in si simple mock-ups, but, you yeah. know. Um, yep. Mm. It's just, you know, because that's exactly what the panel will ask on. How are you going to have 100 extras in, you know, how are you going to have, you know, um, that shadow fly across the sky or that, you know, whatever it is. And it's just having the solutions all worked out. That's mm. for second stage, though, obviously. And, you know, for second stage as well, um, and hopefully someone here at this event today that will be at that stage, more than one maybe. And um, it's that you really, you're selling it then. You know, it's like the, every script will be deserving of the award at that stage. So you have to go above and beyond with your visuals. You have to wow us. I've seen scripts come in that I thought were the weaker of the, say, the 10 and award schemes and win it because they came in with the whole team the whole pack, like Bjorn, every question answered, worked out. That builds confidence, communication, passion. But, you know, coming in with some beautiful photographs or imagery, but really excellent ones, you know, not just taken off the Internet and just, you know, mood. we can all do mood boards, but something that encompasses um, an essence of your film that, will sell it to us so will it get us get us excited get the panel excited about your project i agree like for um for the ones where we've so again the production packs those those visual packs that we submit like we spend a huge amount of time getting those as good as you possibly can and again i kind of like think of it like you play a little cinema in your head and if i'm if i'm looking through this pack can i see the film can i feel the film you know the, the you know the the tone of it, the color scheme, everything is like you should try, try and think it out into as much detail as you possibly can. And yeah. the, the interview team mightn't pick up on everything that you've put into it, but like the, the shadow of it will be there, you know, the, the, you, in your confidence in knowing the film, knowing your film and knowing why it should be made will be there then in the interview as well. Mm, yeah. Can, can I just say there, I see a question from Tom there. Oh, yeah. He's asking about the timeline and the timeline um, and this is dictated by, by DLR is for a completed film by September 2022. So the formal agreement should be all signed off by early December. So effectively, you need to be thinking about that if you're successful, you know, you, you can shoot any time from December on and uh, you need to be um, have your final um, edit by September. I mean, I, I, typically what happens is DLR will do a screening event. It's usually in the lexicon and that's where 
uh, Bjorn and Kieran's um, film, The Lighthouse, was screened. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to screen any of them since because of because of the pandemic. But we probably will have like a big event with a lot of films to show, short films to show in one go. So we may even wait to show the ones that have been made in the meantime, you know, um, all together. We haven't quite decided on that. But it would be important to. So, I mean, we the, the deadline is really to make you kind of focus, you know, it's not to be harsh or anything, focus on the project and get the project done and delivered, you know. So um, that, that's where that's and in coming. In terms from. of timeline as well, not the timeline, but um, just because Kira is not here um, mm. from Dunleary, just if you do get selected, like work with Dunleary and um, with them, they're really, really helpful. Like they're really in terms of securing our locations, like we shot in one of the old Martello Towers um, and on Kalini Hill and like it was even one of the locations we didn't actually end up using in the end, but they wanted to charge us and a stern phone call from Kira, you know, sorted that out. Like, so they're, you know, work, work with them as much as possible and ask them for, and don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, if you get, yeah. you know, you know, contact Vanessa, we, we like Jean Rice, who I assume is still in Dunleary. Um, yeah, she is. Like she, um, again, we uh, we would needed a place to record the voiceover. So she let us use the, the studio up in Dunleary for free and yeah. gave us lots of help. Um, yeah. in terms of production advice as well so don't yeah. be afraid to ask for help right okay so look i just want to say we're, we're more or less running out of running out of time now but um the other thing is that iadt um offers some access to equipment and the studio and like that the the uh, the radio studio but the it, it's subject to availability like obviously they're in use you know all through term time so it would probably really be in the summertime if you're factoring that in and we can we've also factored in um, a small budget for some mentoring as well. So, you know, if if you we, we, we don't want to say exactly what it's for, because if we find that we're, there's a little bit of work to be done with the script, then it'll be in the script writing area. So we wait and see after the award is made, you know, what the recommendations are. Maybe there's, there's other kind of directing support or whatever, and kind of tailor it to the needs, you know, of, of the individual um, uh, group, you know, but, um, so, so, so it is there, but you know that's a, a finer detail to be sorted out. Post. Yeah, and to second that, uh, Bernie, following on uh, also from what Bjorn is saying is that obviously the National Film School is totally invested in this award scheme. Yeah. Uh, we clearly see the value of it. We know that it is um, a really vitally important bridging scheme between graduate and going on to then Screen Ireland or other um, funding um, schemes. Um, and, um, you know, Bjorn mentioned Jean Rice. She's newly appointed the new chair of film at the film school. And uh, between herself, myself and the rest of the team, that would be more than happy to um, support that process ongoing and support uh, the brilliant Deal or First Friends uh, scheme. You know, it's, it's, it's a great scheme. And we look forward to the, seeing the, the new films from the next round, you know. Yeah. Exactly. So, look, if you if anybody has any other questions, um, the email address is dlrfirstframes at iadt.ie. It's on the website if you can't take note of it right now. But um, so if you've got questions, you can post those in and we, we'll pick them up over the uh, the summer. It might be a couple of days before because we're I'm technically on holidays, but I'll, I'll check in, in on it every couple of days and answer any queries that come up. But uh, there's a lot of information in the FAQs and the additional information, and of course, the recording of this. So um, I think we're probably going to get cut off now any minute. <laughs> but look, I thank everybody for coming and I, I really appreciate um, Bjorn and Vanessa. Um, so uh, I, hope, I hope that was useful to everybody. And thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Bernie, as always. Thanks and thanks, much. Paul Kern thanks, and Paul. Bjorn. That's great to see you. <laughs> Very good. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye.